It's 30 years, for example, since Italian 90. There's so many anniversaries have been celebrated during lockdown. But Jack's death really brought us back to that era, didn't it? I mean, it really gave the nation a chance to remember, as if it was only yesterday. Well, you see, we were lucky in, in that, with such things as the recordings, you know, the old films coming back. And then, I'm sure there were people 70 years of age, 80 years of age, looking at them where they were teenagers. And that must have been a great help to them. Then you had teenagers saying, God, I wonder will we ever see them days again. As I said the other day when I was interviewed by the, the Irish Independent, it was a great time to be growing up. It was a great time to be getting old. Because all of a sudden, the old person were able to say, I was alive when that happened. And the young people were saying, God, you know, we'll treasure, will we ever see them days again? Hope. And uh, we're always hoping and hoping. And please God, things will turn around for us. All through that. He was such a special man, Jack, wasn't he? Well, I, I tell you, firstly, I can't, the number of times I've said this, his man management skills, to me, were unequaled. He could tell you off and yet praise you the same. Do you understand? Just, for instance, I remember Chris Morris got injured one time. And at that time, Mick Bourne and I had a relationship that he would tell me if the player had to leave the field of play, or he would take him into the pavilion wave up to the stand to the doctor, Mr. Martin Walsh. And as I come off the field, I waved up to Martin, come in. We come inside, Martin looked, totally needed immediate attention. He said, Charlie, ring a taxi, please. I got a taxi. Taxi driver, Martin told him, I've already made arrangements for him to be picked up in the matter private to be looked after immediately. We no sooner done that, then a steward came in and said, there's a gentleman at the door. A gentleman from Celtic was there. So he happened to know me. He said, Charlie, is everything all right? I said, yeah. He's gone to the matter private. Everything is in order. He's been looked after. He said, thank you very much. So the next morning at the staff table, Jack said, everything go well, Charlie? And I repeated that story. And he turned around to the rest of them. He said, are you listening to that? He said, when I was at Middlesbrough, I had an assistant. And I never forgot one day, I'm about two miles away in the training ground, and he called me. I have to come all the way back. He said, there's a phone call for you. He said, could you not take the call yourself? Now, here was a man, he says, took the responsibility. And then, before my head got too big, he said, when you make a decision, make sure it's the right one. So all of a sudden, he puts me up six foot, and in one punch he brings me down sitting flat again, you know what I mean? Now, that type of man management, he tried it so often on players as well, tell them they were bad, and all of a sudden, he raised them up again. He was a wonderful man. And then on top of that, he, he, uh, I think I told the story before, a player reported early in the week, and he happened to say to Mick Bourne, the wife's expecting. So Mick went in and told Jack, so Jack sent for the player, said, go on home, stay with your wife overnight, come back the day before the match, and by the way, you're playing. You understand? Mm. And then about two weeks later, or the next, not only, the next match we had, the lad came in again, but his father was in hospital in Dublin here, and he happened to say to Mick, I'd like to go to see my father. So Mick went to Jack again. So Jack said, here, there's the keys of my car. Go and see your dad. Go home and stay with your mother for the, and go back first thing in the morning for training. He was saying that th th these situations, like nobody heard of these things, done them private, but he always had everybody's happiness and, and, and the team at heart. So much of your life story is, for Irish fans is based around Italian 90 and 94 and Stuttgart in 88 and Mick Bourne and all those wonderful stories. But 
You've such a great football career as well, Charlie. I mean, you refereed the 1972 FAI Cup final yeah. when Maya Denny scored that famous hat trick. Well, to say, perhaps I was one of the luckiest people. Refereeing done an awful lot for me. I would recommend refereeing to anybody because it's an education in life itself. First of all, if they keep fit, you get paid. On top of that, you learn man management. You learn how to control. You learn how to demand respect. Or command respect, I should say, not demand, command respect without being arrogant. You learn all of that. You don't that you're in any university. On top of that, true refereeing. Now, I was lucky that I was on the FIFA panel, so I had got many trips abroad. So I saw a fair amount of Europe that I could have never have afforded with the job I worked in. Now, on top of that, when I gave up the refereeing, the FAI asked me to whether I act as a liaison officer, which meant that I used to meet the visiting teams coming in. Now, when the famous Italian World Cup, Cup team came here, I was with them for three days. When the Spanish team were down in Flower Lodge in Cork, I was with them for three days. I was with Poland, I was with Holland. I was with all the top teams for three days. I was with them. So, uh, then, Jacks, I, I had refereed Legion Oil, but I'd also been on the line to Legion Oil. So I was in charge of the Welsh team for Jack's very first match. And I went into the pavilion before the game to get along with a pump at Mickbourne, and Jack recognised me. He said, How are you keeping? I had a chat. And when I left, he said to Mickbourne, What does he do? And Mick said, He does this, that, and the other for the visiting team. And Jack said, Who does that for us? He said, Nobody, I do everything. Jack, that's silly. We did not avoid it for the next match. So I was invited. So through refereeing, then I got in to the Irish panel. And I never looked back after that. Now, I mean, how lucky can a person be? You were there for so many of the great days. And there was a lovely couple of days, a couple of years ago, down in the K Club when, when Jack came back over. And I would have to say, that's one of the great, see, an awful lot of people were in the panel, doing an awful lot of good things. As I said, Paul McGrath was one of the best ever players I've ever seen. But Noel Quinn there, Noel done, Noel was behind that project in the K Club when we all got together. <coughs> and you may think that the players, but there was one thing I noticed that Noel was, the wives and the partners were there. But they were all in groups, and I heard them speaking, the, the ladies talking, you know what I mean? And they were saying, isn't it great? We, we haven't seen other for years. Some of them are grandmothers now, mm. and they were having a chat together, a get-together. So here was the players having a get-together, and here was the wives and partners having a get-together after so many years. Now, I doubt there's any international team had that type of report like I, I doubt very much. And again that that comes back to Jack. Because when he took over, before Jack took over, the situation is we only can this is only hearsay for me, I wasn't there. <coughs> it appears when John Joyce and Owen Hand was there. The players were report. The Dublin born players was report home to their own house. Then come back the next day. The players whose parents were born in England would stay in the hotel. It happened the first match against Wales. Didn't happen after that. Jack said, no, call them together. When you come here, you leave your bag in the hotel, you're born in Dublin, go straight home to see your parents. And then if they want to see you after that, they come out to the hotel to see you. You don't go home to see them. They come to see you in the hotel. They're welcome. But we go together, everywhere together. So he started this game of going into town on Monday afternoon. Do you know what I mean? Going, and then when we go to a centre spot, some would go here for coffee, others went here for the game of snooker, others went shopping. 
when we went together, we came home together, the same then, at night time. He never wanted, he never advised any of them. For, come, for instance, on a Monday night, we go to the films. On the way home then, we bring a phone, he'd pull up at the pub there in Garner Street. You know. Hill 16. Yeah, Hill 16. And in there, or maybe two, at the very most three things. I would say we're mostly two. But the lads were happy with that. It became part of our schedule. They looked forward to it. Then, the same like, he always asked them, please, if you're going to have a drink, don't go down to the bar, don't be seen at the bar. Have your little drink privately. Do you know what I mean? And they, for that reason, they, he treated them as adults and with respect, and they showed respect as a proof, like, when you saw, the, the reports came back after it feeling like, there wasn't one bad word said by any of the players. It was like losing a, a, a relative hmm. with, with all the tributes paid. What does an award like this mean for you, Terry? Well, I would have to say, you see, when you spend time, you see, I'm still a member of the Leinster Football League. I attended a meeting last Thursday and we've ten new club, uh, 12 new clubs and 9 new clubs out of the Finnish bar. And I take a pride in that. But I also take a pride in the fact that the Football Association of people who are in it are aware that I, I, I'm making some, some, what would you say? Contribution. Some gift to the, to the, to the association. So somewhere along the line, I'm helping my help anyway. And, and they're saying, look Charlie, this is our way of saying thanks. And you have to appreciate that, like, I mean, thanks is a wonderful word. It's worth a million pounds be times, like, you know what I mean? And I'm thrilled at the idea of getting, of getting any award, but certainly from, what you're, like, when you're, you're, you're named person like yourself, who's respected in the media, Paul McGrath, Noel Quinn, coming along here today, and then, yeah, a top photographer, Ray McManus. You know, it was all top class. So we don't need a big dinner. We don't need a big dinner, a big meal to, to, to project it. It's the same to me. When I was out there, I was handed that trophy. It was the same I was walking up on the stage in some big hotel. I appreciate it for the same reason as, as a, a thank you for what I've done. And, and what my family have done, because in fairness, my wife, I guess, she's dead now, but she gave a lot of her time to me, like, well, I didn't, I, I took the time from her to give the football. So it, it, it's, I, I don't know, maybe I'm talking too much. Well, Charlie, I'm sure I speak on behalf of everybody involved in Irish football, and I say to you and to your family, thank you so much, and the best of luck for the future. Thank you very much, Leah, thank you.